Supernet aims to give people their power back through technology by no longer needing to rely on third parties such as exchanges, banks and services, giving you privacy at the same time. Supernet Technologies is the most anonymous technology being worked on currently, with a team of developers working diligently daily. Supernet aspires to be a creative, innovative, state-of-the-art solutions provider, which provides individuals opportunity, personal satisfaction and value. You can find out more at www.supernet.org and join our Slack with over 2,500 people. For media, blockchain news, crypto crews and interviews, keeping you tuned in to the ecosystem. Hello and welcome to Core Radio. Good morning, people. Uh, this is Roots coming to you live from New York City. And today we have a new ICO coming out. Uh, it, it'll be out soon. It's a, it's a very business-sided type of uh, blockchain technology. And I have one of the CEOs on air right, right now with us. Uh, he calls himself Loco Hammerhead. That is his uh, his his uh, nickname on uh, Slack. Uh, are you on with us? Are you on with us? Are you on with us? How's it going? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Not a whole ton. Just trying to get this tech going. Got a lot going on. Okay. What what's going on? Tell me. Well, mainly trying to explain to people how the Black Pool platform can benefit them and business. Ah, okay. We'll, we'll get to that. So, so Black Pool is an ICO coming out, right? Yes, we're we're actually calling it a token exchange, but yeah, the concept is pretty much the same. Okay, and if you were to uh, compare it to something that's already existing, what would it be like? I would say it's a combination of multiple different uh, projects. SciaCoin is a good comparison, um, but when it comes down to it, there really isn't anything that can fully grasp the extent that we're looking to go here. Okay, uh, SciaCoin is a mining coin, right? Hardware mining coin? You can mine them. Um, uh, we're actually using a DPoS mainly because it's far more stable. You can do way more with it than you can with normal proof of stake or proof of work coins. What's DPoS? Because it means a little so something different in different technologies. Like in, uh, in Komodo, it's delayed proof of work, I think, right? Yeah, um, uh, the way that we're using a delegated proof of stake, we're using it mainly to move the chain forward and maintain consensus. Right, so, so how does that work exactly? So if I were to obtain some of the coins, how do, is that like a staking technology? And how does that work? Each person would be running a node. Um, there are going to be 201 delegate nodes, and each one of those would be able to forge. Forging is pretty much the same as staking or mining a block in this case. Oh, like NXT forging. Yeah, closer to that in this, in this regard, yeah. So, so there's going to be 201 master nodes. Can we call them master nodes? Uh, for posterity's sake, yeah. And how would one, uh, you know, if I wanted to run the master node, what would be the requirements for me to run one? Each token is counted as a vote. Um, in order to become a forging delegate, you have to be in the top 201. Okay. Oh, so is it so people are going to vote for other people? Correct. Yes. And uh, I see I have a community here. What's the what's the Slack? Do you know offhand what your Slack uh, 
invite is so people could join the com the community and get you know involved maybe they want to be one of those people that run a note on blockpool we have the slack invite on our bitcoin talk forum thread and also on our website blockpool.io blockpool.io all right and so so this is um so with, there's going to be mess nodes uh and people who own one will be able to stake uh, and earn some profits. And so, what what will in the, in the business world? What what are you going to be using this coin for? Like how how are you going to get demand and customers? And what what are what are your customers going to be like? Like who who will, who will make use of this? Well, that's a good question. Right now, the focus of a lot of blockchain developers is all or nothing. That doesn't work for modern business right now. They're very hesitant to even consider using the blockchain. Our goal is to help ease those pains. So our platform is actually completely separate from our blockchain. We allow businesses to create plugins to allow their legacy systems to communicate when they otherwise would not be able to. In addition to this, we also allow them the option to utilize the blo uh, our blockchain as well, be it via private chains, pseudo private chains, or if, if they want to, they can use our public master chain. And, what, and hopefully, it was, it was, it was, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, so what's the difference between these chains that they use? Like, if I wanted to choose one, what, what would be the criteria? Why, why, would, why would I choose certain chains? Uh, and, you know, how are you going to deliver these chains? It really depends on the needs of the customer. So, for example, if we've got a large company with um, data that they don't want accessed by the public, we would set up a private chain that they would run on site. So each, um, they would uh, select certain servers to run as nodes and that token would never reach the public. Okay, uh, so are, are, is there more than one chain? Just trying to understand how it works. The companies will be able to um, use whatever they want, actually. Um, we're providing the option to use separate chains. We are also going to be creating our own side chains, which will utilize the Blackpool master chain if, there, if there's some times when public information needs to be added. Gotcha. But, gotcha. But, but, sounds like a lot of work. What, what kind of... Uh... What, what kind of experience do we have on the team over here? Is this, uh, what, what kind of, who are, who are the developers and, you know, what's their experience? The audio coin uh, and black hole team uh, have been functioning since mid 2014. Uh, we created Aurovine uh, to work with audio coin, which was our original to uh, token. After doing a lot of research, we realized that the uh, original proof of stake consensus that we were using just won't work for what we need. It wouldn't scale to what we needed. And so Blackpool was formed from that. Um, uh, the developers that we have, Andy and Raj, um, on top of a, a couple others, are very well versed in JavaScript in their respective fields. Um, Raj actually just cre uh, finished his master's degree in which he created a electricity exchange utili utilizing a solar panel array and the Ethereum blockchain. So, okay, all right. And uh, so, so they're, really, they're related to audio coin. Uh, I think I, I think we did an interview with them a while back. It wasn't me. It was uh, Mr. Prince. You know John Prince? Yep, I know him very well. He's a good friend. Good friend. <laughs> He's he he comes back every once in a while. Uh, I think he interviewed you guys, 
Or is Audio Coin the same team? Yeah, um, I originally wasn't part of the team when they launched Audio Coin. I joined about a year after. Okay. But the team was okay. too much in the team. my original. All right, cool. And uh, so, so uh, let let's get to marketing. Oh, what kind of uh, what kind of marketing are you are you gonna you know how are you gonna get these customers? We're looking to reach our cost, uh, customer base via multiple different methods: social media, articles, Bitcoin talk, anything that we can think of. We have bounties set up to sp uh, help spread the word. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin technology. Okay, this is what this show. Th this is what this technology is about. This is what you're you're selling here. Bitcoin technology. Uh, I'm a I'm I'm an average bakery owner, right? I'm a business owner. How would I utilize your uh, your blockchain technology you're offering? Right? Like, what what could you do for me? Well, we could. Uh, one option is. Bakeries usually have multiple different customers as well. We would uh, uh, set up a set them up on our master chain because bakeries aren't large enough to need their own side chains or um, their own private master chains. We would cr uh, create DApps um, and uh, that would connect to our platform and would allow their legacy systems, their uh, their point of service system, um, any um, pay, uh, other payment systems, invoicing systems that they may have in, uh, already built. And we would allow those systems to communicate with our master chain. Hey, I used, to, hey, I used, hey, I used to be a baker man, right? I, I know about bakeries. I, I developed over the years a very, a very large belly because of it. And then I got rid of the belly, but it was, it was the best time of my life. You ever, you ever been to a bakery in New York? I haven't even had the luck to be in New York yet. I've been to Chicago, but ma major cities I, I have a tendency to avoid just because they're so busy. Uh, you sound young. You should you should get your butt over here. Come to Brooklyn and get go to one of the bakeries, the Italian bakeries over here. Oh, forget about it. I, I've heard a lot about them, and I really want to try them out. And it, plus, while you're here, you could go to like uh, the Bitcoin Center, you know, and you could uh, you know you could meet meet people, socialize. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'd love to be able to check that out one day. So, uh, just get, getting back to uh, the, I got sidetracked. I like bakeries. They, the problem is they don't like me. They're hard to run these days. Oh, I know, I know. Trust me. Uh, so, let's uh, let's get back. So you, so you'd be able to provide a DAP, from what I understand, for the bakery to implement into uh, whatever. POS system you're using, I'm guessing? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? So, so uh, most most bakeries, they use a POS system, you know, proof point of sale system. Uh, so you guys are going to be able to create some type of decentralized application, right? For, for their uh, POS system, is that correct? Yes, the concept that we have in mind would be allow their point of service system to communicate with the blockchain. So they would be able to el uh, essentially eliminate um, any sort of invoicing system like Quicken or anything like that. It, we, we would be able to cre uh, create a one-to-one -one connection between the point of service system, the blockchain, and their bank account. Gotcha. And and the the benefits. What are the benefits of using uh, the blockchain as opposed to you know their their normal methods? The transaction fees are lower. Um, 
we don't charge obscene percentage rates like MasterCard or other point of service systems do, which I believe can reach up to 6% uh, in some cases. And also there's, there's a benefit with uh, having it recorded on the blockchain, right? Oh yeah, definitely. You can instantly go back to any purchase that ever happened and say, okay, this, this is what we sold and this is how much it was. It, implications for anything from fraud to just general indexing is, is, is what the blockchain really does best. Right. So it, it creates a, a ledger, you know, a permanent ledger of all your transactions and then you, you'd always be able to go back and utilize uh, the ledger to find out what happened you know five years ago on a, at a certain time at a certain day what transaction went down and it'll always be there yep exactly you know you know a lot of people lose these this information a lot of people you know have books you know that that get lost uh and you never know when the IRS comes down and asks for information you just don't have anymore. But everything, everything, but everything, everything gets recorded for life. Yeah, exactly. Centralized databases crash, computers crash. Data can be lost because of a thunderstorm. And like you said, when the IRS comes down, you want to be able to say, "This is these are the sales that we do, uh, have done. This is the information that we have. And we have everything that you will need. Very cool, very cool. Um, so, do you, do you know the type of POS systems you're going to be able to implement your, your technology into yet? Or is that maybe for the Currently, there are a couple different systems that we're looking to implement. Um, World Bank is one of them. Um, but our system isn't limited to any one system because of its data agnostic um, nature. We, as long as we create a plugin that will work with that system, our uh, platform will automatically route to whatever other plugins are connected, allowing for legacy systems, any real legacy systems, that, as long as they have an API, to communicate. All right. Uh, do you guys, do you guys, uh, you know, are you guys going to create your own API? Yes, we will be creating our own API. The platform itself is going to need um, a separate API as well. And the blockchain itself is going to be written as a wrapper, a plugin wrapper for our data agnostic system. All right, and let's look at it from a, an investor's point of view. Somebody wanted to invest in this technology instead of using it. Uh, what's the supply gonna be like? What's the total supply of the coin going to be like? There's a total of 25 million. Um, 20 million is going to be released during the tech uh, to investors and, and such like that. The rest is going to um, development costs, um, payment for uh, consultation, uh, developers, bounties. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna keep five what is that uh five million off the bat from the 25 million for you know and that's the, that's common you know waves did the same things and look how good they're doing and uh you're going to keep that and you're going to pay for things now now but as an investor I'd, I'd like to be able to see the five million uh you know in an account would that be possible for investors to see that, you know, so that they could, you know, they could know that somebody didn't run away with it, that it's always in like the, a public account where people could, they could see it getting utilized little by little? Of course, the nature of our blockchain is public, just like, you know, any other normal wallet, you'd, you'd be able to look it up, you'd be able to see how much is in the account. And we're looking to be as open and transparent as possible with this. We don't want anybody 
looking in and thinking, what is going on here? Something's not right. That that doesn't help anybody at all. Very cool. Yes, it, definitely. And you know, it's you know, there's a lot of big big uh, coins out there that don't don't do that, which I wish they did. So you know, I'd feel more comfortable investing in in them. Um, when is this ICO going to happen? Hello. Did I lose you? Can you hear me? Oh, there you uh, are. Uh, Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry. Um, uh, the tech is actually slated for May 1st and will run for two months. Oh, that's in, that's in three days. Yep, it's coming up. Are you guys excited? Very excited. The response that we've gotten from both the business community and the crypto community has been insane and i can't i couldn't be happier with it very cool yeah i i, I see uh I, I see a lot of uh recognizable names in your slack you know a lot of those people yeah the community is coming back together which is awesome to see um cool very very cool so uh it's it's in three days people may 1st the ICO, the Initial Community Offering, which uh, is there going to be its phases? Like, how is this going to work? Like, every, you know, you know, they all work a little differently. Is this, is it going to be like a, a bonus, people who get in early? We are offering bonuses for people who invest with AudioCoin. What we are doing here for our tech is different than most most have done. We're actually using a price discovery system. So instead of tagging on an arbitrary price that we think that the coin uh, the token is worth, we allow the market to decide. We don't want anybody coming coming away from this thinking that something's overvalued or undervalued. We want people to think that they got what they believe it's worth. All right. And is that going to, how is that going to, like, where do I go to, to participate? The tech uh, will be run on blackpool.io. Okay. And who, who's, uh, who's managing the, the ICO for you? It's, it's like, I know Incent has a, a service that, you know, they, they manage the, the whole ICO for you. Do you have some type of management? Yeah, we're actually using the ARC team and Haggy as a, I'm, I'm sorry, not Haggy, I'm a Carlo, as escrow. All right, very cool. Uh, and it's Car I don't know Carlo. Is Carlo uh, a trusted escrow? Yeah, Carlo's done this for several other uh, ICOs. Um, he's well known within the ARC community and um, several other block, uh, blockchain communities as well. Okay. I, if if you if anything goes, you know, if you need another one, I I could recommend Dabs D A B S. Uh, he's he's really he's really good. Cool. We'll take that into account. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, I think he's a uh, he's a moderator on Bitcoin Talk. Yeah, that'd be very useful. Um. So I, I, I think we, we've covered, uh, let's see. So we got the ICO, right? And uh, you, we, we know about the team. You have a couple good developers. And there's going to be 25 million coins. And hmm. is, is there anything else I should know about this coin? I'm try, trying to think from an investor point of view what kind of... Uh, information i'd want to invest in this well one of the use cases that we've actually been mulling around is a youtube competitor um our platform because of its decentralized nature and its agnostic data agnostic nature we can actually create um, a decentralized file hosting um, along with you know the infrastructure needed to run a, a site the size of YouTube. 
And because of everything that's been happening over on their platform, we see a pretty big gap um, opening up for us to fill. And so what we're planning on doing is utilizing our platform, utilizing our blockchain to better serve the YouTube community. So the issues that are happening over there, we're looking to solve. Right. With videos getting blocked, I've seen that a lot lately. Yep, exactly. And one feature that we're actually talking about is allowing fans to host the files for them. So I believe that this would also, um, you know, cause fan engagement to increase. Um, the content creators will be able to receive a larger portion of the revenue because we don't have to worry about maintaining maintaining a super large infrastructure. The most of that is is handled by their fans. Oh, so, so you, now you're talking about a whole different business. Uh, I was thinking Darkris, you know, that type of business, but now now I'm thinking Descent or maybe Novus Atmos. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're covering multiple different uh, aspects here. All right, so so let's let's get on that. that. That's that's a whole different thing to talk about. You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm a big advocate of uh, you know decentralizing content i've i i'm i've been like from from young i've been downloading content from you know napster you know remember back in the day napster i mean like i've been doing this for life and so, oh, yeah. so, okay. so, so, so. those sites napster Kazaa, all of them oh you're big in, into audio so yeah i imagine you do but uh like how is this gonna work who's gonna ho so the the customer the creators are going to hold the content? Like, where are you going to put the content? Is that IPFS technology? Yes, IPFS will be um, uh, the backbone of our system. So we will utilize the hash code uh, generated by IPFS. We will put that into the blockchain. So there's always a, a link to those files. And because IPFS uses DHT, distributed hash tables, the torrent system, we are able to create redundancy as well. So we will never lose those files. Gotcha. Well, you see, when, when using when using uh, IPFS, I'm, uh, I'm I'm a little experienced with that. Now, the problem is when you when you put a file on it, you know, to share with everybody. Uh, if the person that's hosting that file stops hosting it. It it doesn't work anymore. The the hash does the hash doesn't work anymore. Now how do you say how you solve that? That's where the blockchain comes in. As soon as a file goes offline, our system will replicate that on another fan's system as well. As long as they've opted into it, um, we will always maintain a certain number of file copies. Um, and by utilizing the blockchain, we won't lose the links to those files. We will always have them. Right. All right. So, hmm. have you ever heard of uh, Novus Atmos? Atmos, the it's like a it's not very popular at the moment, but it's a up and coming IPFS type coin uh, where. They host, they're going to host uh, books and, you know, all sorts of content on IPFS for people to uh, create their own gateway and, you know, utilize, you know, access, have access to anything, basically. Uh, and have you looked into that one by any chance? Maybe it, it, if you get some ideas. No, I actually haven't even heard of that one before. Um, are they using it as a blockchain wrapper? where pretty much everything is placed into the blockchain or is it more separated like like ours is i i believe they they're uh, putting all the metadata for all the files within the opera you know use, utilizing opera turn to put the info on the blockchain okay yeah that sounds pretty in line with what we're looking to do so what, what I'm 
the one I'm having issues with myself personally with IPFS is that when I when I host when I upload a video and you know I, I don't upload it anymore I, you know maybe that computer I'm using to host to run the node for IPFS goes down the videos stop working and then people start complaining yep and that's the same issue that the torrents uh, the you know torrent system has the uh, DHT as soon as one uh, file goes down you lose bandwidth and so our system will always maintain a certain amount of copies and one one item that we're going to be implementing um, a, fil a filter so if someone has an internet connection that's only one 1.5 megab uh, megabits a second they won't be able to host because they're just not fast enough to offer the quality of service that we want gotcha but is there is there some type of incentive for people to uh, host the files? Oh yeah, they'll they'll receive a portion of the revenue um, for every view. Oh, I see. So, so you're going to be able to uh, to profit off of uh, views? Oh yeah, the more popular the platform becomes, the more they uh, that they can earn. Hmm. We're gonna have to get a little more technical next time when you come on air. Who's the who's the developer? Uh, Raj is currently the developer for our blockchain. Um, we are. I, I'm actually the best contact to uh, speak about the platform itself and how we pl uh, plan on it functioning. Okay. Very, very cool. Very cool. I, uh, I I don't want this to run too long. It's about thirty minutes. And, uh, you know, after an hour, people start, you know, dropping off. That's just statistics. Um, well, after half an hour, but after an hour, nobody, there ends up being only very few. So statistically, I like to keep the interviews short. Uh, so Raj, so who's, who's going to be running the IPFS technology? Because I'm, I'm interested. I love IPFS. I, I really want everybody to use it. IPFS is going to be utilized by our data agnostic um, system, which is completely separate from our blockchain. Cool. So it sounds like you got you got a couple little projects going on here. Is there anything more? So you got you got a, a darkest type uh, technology or you know function going on, and you have a Novus Atmos type of function going on. Any other types of uh, things? I, I see why you call a block pool. It's a pool of different type of blockchain technologies. Yep, exactly. And right now we're working on a proof of concept uh, utilizing the audio coin chain right now um, with a company called Buzzbike. They are a London-based uh, uh, cycling scheme where they provide free bicycles which, ha which have advertisements on them to people who normally bike around London. It's a very congested city. And so there's, there's a huge call for this sort of thing and advertisers are going crazy for it. What, uh, what Buzzbike wants to do is they want to be able to give back to their, biker, uh, their bicyclists even more. So what we're doing is we're creating a proof of concept for them so they can track the bikers, see how far they've gotten and pay them based on the distance that they've rode. No, that's interesting. You know, uh, you know, I, I suggest working, and I see you, you like work. I like coins that work with other coins because, you know, we're all in this together. You know, it may un, until you know we we reach a trillion dollar market cap in Bitcoin. You know, we have a long way to go, and uh, we have to work together because if we're against each other, we're just hurting each other. So, so, so I suggest uh, you know looking into incent. You know, because they have like an incentivized, that's the whole purpose of the of it, is to incentivize businesses. And they have many businesses already incorporated. So maybe, you know, you give them, you could work with each other. Yeah, there there's way too much infighting within the blockchain community right now. And it's only hindering our progress. We Like you said, we need to start working together. And if we want the blockchain to become the technology that it can be, um, we really do need to start coalescing together. We need to stop fighting and invite friendly competition.
and we're, we're more than willing, more than happy to work with anybody that we believe can bring, you know, benefit to the blockchain and to the business community alike. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, chains could work together. Why not? Like, I, I'm sure Incent would be more than happy to, you know, help you. And at the same time, you know, you could help them by utilizing, you know, their incentivizing program. You know, so, you know, your coin would benefit by using, you know, their, their, their coin, basically. So, you know, every time somebody uh, buys your product or, you know, utilizes your product, they'll get a tiny bit of incent also. So it kind of incentivizes the whole thing. Yeah, that'd definitely be an option. Um, it's, really, it's, really, it's really cool. They're, work, they're working with a lot of other coins, too. Just FYI, it's not, it's, you know, it, it's not out of the normal idea yeah exactly um and you know a, a use, utilizing that as um a method of payment for hosting you know files is is certainly an option cool yeah yeah incentivize you know to, to, you know get a couple of, get a few incent for uh you know buying a book or or watching a video that'd be cool uh all right man all right, is there anything else that I don't know? Or are you because you threw a monkey wrench at me with that whole IPFS thing? Well, there's a lot that I can go on uh, go on about, but we would run way over time. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we'll we'll save it for for next time. I mean, when is uh, I mean, when is Raj going to be available for us? Raj should be available. Um, pretty much any time now i think um he he just finished up on his master's degree so we were kind of allowing him you know time to finish up on that and just make sh and to focus on that and right now um you know since all that's done he's been focusing on getting our chain together um taking a look at the structure of it and seeing where where's a good starting point uh to really work on the configuration all right all right very cool uh what what's he mastering in uh computer science all right that's that's a good thing to know right uh so so uh and it, so we have the blockpool.io website and we, what's your twitter do you have a twitter handle yeah our twitter our twitter handle is at blockpool.io yeah right Guys, at blockpool.io, uh, follow them, Twitter them, and uh, see see how this progresses. I mean, it's at this point, it's very premature, right? Yeah, it's very early on in this uh, in the stage right now. Our we're we're just setting everything up um, and making sure that our chain is stable before we move forward. How far along are you? Right now we're setting up the um, delegates. We're actually starting with a test net of 25 delegates that we're going to increase gradually uh, throughout the test net phase. Um, ARC uses 50 delegates, which is the blockchain that we're forking from. LISC has 101 delegates. We're actually looking to decentralize it even more and use 201 delegates. So there's going to be some more testing that we have to do in order to ensure chain stability to get to that point. If uh, if I were to participate in the testing, would that give me a higher prob probability of becoming a delegate later on? Most likely. Um, it, P the voting system works a lot like a popularity contest. Um, there's really no way around this. Um, we do have um, wild cards which allow non-delegates to forge every now and then because we, we want to allow everybody to share in the fun. We want everybody to feel like they're participating. Yeah, of course. And, and, of course. You know, the, the current delegate systems, you know, like LISC, it's, it's all popularity contest. And right now with, with LISC, the majority of the chain is powered by one group. We want to try to avoid that. All right, very, very cool. All right, man.
Uh, it was great having you on. I'd love for you to come back. Uh, would it be possible for you to come back in a couple of weeks where we could get an update after the ICO, see how everything went? Yeah, certainly. I'd be happy to come back. All right. And I'm not, I didn't get your real, I'm not sure if you want to say your real name. I mean, I, I call you Loco, but. Uh, yeah, everybody uh, calls me by Loco, but my real name is Brandon Cook. I, I am the CIO of Blackpool. All right. And he's not anonymous. That's a great thing. because It's really difficult to, uh, to trust coins that have anonymous devs. Yeah, exactly. And that was one one of the things that we took into account before uh, starting this is we want everybody to know who we are so they can feel confident in investing. Oh, uh, also, be, before you go, take a look at the Agama wallet, the Komodo Agama wallet, and try to get your coin in it. I mean, it, it doesn't it's free. I mean, why not? It's a, it's a, it's like another wallet for people to use for your blockchain. Oh yeah, definitely. That's anything like that is incredibly useful. It's it's like it's like a multi wallet, you know. You, I mean, I I don't understand why every every coin is not trying to get into the another wallet. See, the way I see it is, I I used to own a bakery. That's why I love bakery. And the the when things were really busy, busy like Christmas, right? And we had lines around the corner. The way we made more money was having more cash registers. More cash registers, more money. So why not have more cash registers? That's the way I see the wallets. Have more wallets. Uh, you know, uh, the whole point of a coin is to have people download a wallet. Is you know, you're gonna track how many times a wallet's downloaded. That's how how well you're doing, right? We'll have more wallets. Yep, exactly. The more more access people have, the better it is. Okay, so, so check it out. I think the way you, you get involved in, uh, in it, you just go to the GitHub and, you know, your developer, whoever's developing the wallet, just has to, like, push the code to their, their GitHub and they'll, they'll add it to their multi-wallet. Okay, that's super easy. Yeah, I, I'm, not for me. I'm not a developer. I have no idea how that works, but, you know, that's, that's what I know. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely look into that. All right, Loco, you have a great day, brother. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Tell everybody I said hello, and uh, I expect you back in two weeks. I, I hope you do very well in your ICO, and uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to get you know maybe uh, a few people involved that I know uh, in in your project. Awesome! Thank you very much, Lutz. Hi, right, brother. Have a great day, and everybody who's listening, thank you for coming out. And this is Lutz. Signing off.